Welcome to another video by me, Joe Unwin, also known as Flow Joe. Today we're going to be looking at apply to each loops and how we can avoid going through records and records and records, especially if we just want to target one. Now obviously sometimes you want to go through each of them and react to what data comes back, but sometimes you just want to pick out a name or pick out an email from either the first or a random number in the records list um, that you actually want. So how do we avoid apply to eaches? Well, there's several ways and I'm gonna go through that with you. And as you can see on the screen, you've got the manual trigger flow that I've already created. I've got a list of rows um, action, which is just going to bring back a list of rows from a table. And this table is a pets table, it's simply got names, types, and color. So the name is obviously the name field, the type is just a choice of a cat or dog, and then color is just a text field of black, brown, etc. So when I run this, I'm going to get a list of records back. But when I want to open a compose and just put the name in, now let's say I just want the first name, if I add the name in, it's going to add and apply to each. And this is what we're trying to avoid, right? We don't want to cycle through all of them. But let's just test this to see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to run the flow and as you can see, once it's finished running, I'm now getting three records back and I'm getting the name. So I'm getting Jax, I'm getting Meg and I'm getting Luna. Now, how do I avoid this apply to each if I just want the first one? Well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to keep the apply to each here, but I'm going to add another action and I'm going to add compose, my favorite action. And I'll tell you why it's my favorite action, because you can do anything in it. So how do we actually get the first record then? Well, if I say first, and then I come into my dynamic content. So from my, exp I've clicked in the in inputs, I've clicked an expression of type first. I've now come back to the dynamic content and I'm selecting the value. It's going to bring back the first record. But how do I actually get the first um, particular name. Well, if I click OK here, that's going to bring back the whole record. So let's just test this and see what I'm, uh, let's uh, see what I'm actually talking about. Because um, for those of you that don't actually know Dataverse or anything like that, this is going to bring back the entire row. So obviously I'm just getting a flow warning, so I'm not using uh, any OData filtering. But Essentially what's happening is I've brought back the first record. So it's the first row in here. So I'm getting all the information related to Jax and every other uh, column in here is coming back. But I just want the name, right? So how do we avoid um, bringing back the entire record and just bringing back the name then? Well, if I open the previous Compose, you can see that I've put the name here and on the screen, you can see the question mark and then it has the uh, square brackets and then it says CR6A8. Now it's very small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to open up my first. I'm going to scroll all the way along if I can. And then I'm going to paste this in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the items section and I'm going to delete the squiggly bracket. And what that's actually doing then is it's adding a question mark, square bracket, and then passing through the field's true name. So if I come back here and I go into my table and I go uh, into my column section and I look at the name, you can see the name there. That's what you need to use to actually target the field. Now we, what we're doing here is we're using JSON to target it, but um, what you're going to notice is there's no capitals. It all needs to be lowercase. And this catches a lot of people out. They'll type this as is and they'll get nothing back. You need to make sure it's lowercase. So we've typed essentially what well, we've copied, but we've typed the actual name of the field and we've put a question mark in because if it doesn't appear or um, it's null or empty or whatever, it's just going to query to see if it's there. If it does exist, then it will bring it back. So if I click update now, and then I run this test again, what that's going to do, 
or what it should do, hopefully, is bring back our name only from the first record. Now, that's great then, and we'll actually have our first record name, and what we've done then is we've completely avoided the apply to each. So we don't have to cycle through three records, have the name being replaced on the compose each time. We've targeted the name. So let's do some best practices and rename this and just say uh, first name. Oh, let's, let's quit first row name just to uh, be more clearer. So now we've actually got the first row name. So what did I actually do then? So what I did was I used the first function. I typed first. I then put the output of the value that's returned from the list rows pets um, into that. And then what I've done at the end of that, and I've closed my parentheses there, I then simply do question mark, square bracket, and then single quotation, pass the name from the column, and that's where you get it from here. So you've got the display name, then you've got the name, so we're copying the actual name, making sure it's all lowercase, and then we are finishing it with a single quotation mark again, and a square bracket. So it's going to target that particular field, and then it's going to bring that back from the first one. But then how do I pick the third one to do the same? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to add another action and do another compose because it's the greatest action in the world. And I'm going to open the expression box and let's just move to the side a bit. And I'm going to paste this back in. Now previously what I did was I had um, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the first and I need to make sure I delete the other parentheses that closes it out here and now behind the body slash value I'm going to pass in a square bracket and uh, I'm going to open a square bracket and close a square bracket but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass a number now what you need to remember is when lists come back, when a list of records comes back, it has a base of zero. So the first one is zero. So first record is zero. Second record is one. Third record is two. So if I pass two in here, what that's going to do is it's just going to say, okay, get this list of outputs and get the values. So we have all of the rows, then pick the second, which is technically the third because it has a base of zero. So zero, one, two, I'm going to get the third row. And then I also want to target just the field name. So I go value, square brackets, the record I want, base of zero, always remember that. And then square brackets again, single quotations, and then the actual value um, of the name of the field that you want. So if I click OK, and then I run this, actually what we'll do is we'll rename this. I'll say um, third row name, and then I'll hit run. A few moments later. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, so um, the, while the flow is running then, um, I'm expecting now my first name, Jax, to be come back, and then on the third one, I'm getting Luna. So what we've done is we've completely avoided the apply to each. Now this is really useful if, let's say, you've got a list of records that you've uh, that's coming back, and you only want to target a specific one that isn't the first, well then you can use the square brackets, but if you want to target the first, then you simply might as well use the first function because it will always bring back the first row. Again, you don't have to do that if you prefer using the square brackets route and just completely ignoring the first function, just having the output of the body slash value, square bracket, you can put zero to get the first row back and then you could then do your question mark as well as your square brackets and the uh, column name. Now, this um, field name will come back and it will all um, 
bring it all back and it will completely avoid the apply to each. And what this allows us to do then is it allows us to delete this and completely avoid the apply to each that we was trying to do in the first place. So that's how easy it is. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so please hit that like and subscribe button if you found this helpful, and leave a comment if you have any questions below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.